it's a very moist environment, but they've been power washing in here, so I'm not sure that this is a permanent situation, but it does have that super must. That's, uh, that's thick. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. I have five things on the docket for today. The first one is this. It's a $26,000 project. I bumped into the owner in a coffee shop and it was at a tipping point. The tipping point is this. What are we gonna do with the electrical gear? What's the status? How do we approach it? So I said, how about this? 250 bucks, I'll show up, we'll do a thorough inspection, I'll document it and report it to you and you'll know exactly what the current state and future life of that equipment is. He said, let's do that. So I am having one more transaction with what we call monkey's paw, where they have spent 250 bucks with me to do one little thing. When you start spending money with somebody, it's easier to spend more money. So I'm getting my foot in the door because they haven't selected us yet as the electrical contractor for this project, but I'm working on it. So this is step one today. Let's take a look inside. And I've got my apprentices, Amos and Titus, with me today. So should go smoothly. Interesting. Three phase, 400 amp overhead. This cabinet and riser are relatively new. I've got no issues with that. Neutral still marked, still has tape on it. Big locks on the 400 amp disconnect, but also quite new. This conduit put a lot of work into that. I'd like to put a strap right there because we are about 10 feet between supports. Look, they had a tree growing up out of this. Put a lot of pressure on that conduit. Thankfully, it's been addressed. There's the meter down there. Conduit, here's the LB. Let's take a look inside. With a gap, I'm thinking rodent entry. It's got a gasket, <clears throat> but we just gotta close that up so figure out why it's bulging. Ah, they've got a <clears throat> split bolt. Looks like probably a split bolt since it's all taped up. So one thing I don't like about a bulging LB, you see how much space there is? A mouse can totally get in there and then they're inside and into the panel and they're in your conduit and they're nesting and they found a potentially somewhat warm place because current flow can create a little bit of heat. Warm place to nest, so. <clears throat> Let's think about what to do about that. This is not that old out here. If we get a good feel from the overall system, we'll probably leave that connection as opposed to repulling wire from here to there. But um, might open it up, take it apart, look at it, and put it back together or repull. Okay. It's a very moist environment, but they've been power washing in here, so I'm not sure that this is a permanent situation, but it does have that super must that's, uh, that's thick, and obviously signs of rust on this old equipment. This is my first time laying eyes on it, and it's, uh, it's old. What can I say? I'm gonna check with the others and make sure that they're okay if I turn off power right now. So I'm gonna um, turn off power here in a couple of minutes once I get these opened up. Have you? Uh, Jason was saying he had thrown some switches and... So we threw the actual panel, he threw the uh, two-phase. Okay. Day. Every day, every time we cut power, it's been outside to have disconnect. Got it. Do you guys have the locks on there? Is that your... No, there shouldn't be a lock on it. Okay, there are some padlocks on that disconnect right now. Oh. Uh, be that guy. Yeah, there shouldn't... We haven't had any padlocks on that. Really? Yeah, so there's a padlock on there. I'll call Jason and verify that we didn't put one on there. I have the key to all of our padlocks, so if it works, it works. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but as far as those, these in here, it's only been the actual breaker panel and that two-phase. Got it. So status update, you guys are already under contract, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, we're already under contract. We've uh, completed all the demo. Painters going to be the first ones in, so I get the ceiling painted. Nice. Obviously, you can smell it. Uh, so we're gonna get the ceiling painted. They're gonna seal that smell in. Our guys are gonna come in, pressure wash the slab, use a deodorizer on it. Uh, seal the slab, the ceiling, that smell in the slab, and then the wall is gonna be painted with some better wash. We start framing it 
Okay. Do you know if this is local or out of state ownership or what that looks like? Local. Okay. Um, first time you've worked with them or is this? Yeah, a first time I've worked with them, yeah. Nice. And um, did they purchase or are they leasing this facility? She bought it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I'm trying to think through just like what that means for longevity and investment in the space and. Uh, I know that she has a current office that she does practice out of. I think this would be her second location that she's going to open and run. Okay. Uh, I mean, she's doing a lot of work to it. I hope that she wants to keep it. Of it. Yeah, it sounds like she's in that position. That's heavy. Kill one, kill two. As long as it doesn't kill me. Uh, she's going to have to make a value decision. Is it something like, and I'm just thinking out loud, I'll organize my thoughts as I go. This equipment is going to have some lead time. What does slowing down the project look like? What, what's the impact to her? Does she have like a firm open date? Does she have an overflow of clientele from location Far one that she's trying to? Okay. Uh, so is we, it? So truthfully, we've already sent the project back probably two months waiting on a permit. So that was already a big hurdle dealing with uh, the city, the state, and dealing with Homeland Security was right. a huge setback. So I don't know if she's necessarily too fond of being for setbacks, but she also knows that the situation that the world's in with lead times and mm -hmm. material costs. And so she's flexible in a way. That's good, that's my, good. My question, like, my big thing is, is what can we delete, what needs to stay, what? And you're asking the right question. So can we operate on this equipment in the time being safely? Yeah. Can we, what's the cost of, uh, and lead time to uh, slot this project in at a later date, let's say six month lead time for sake of discussion, um, what is, regular business hours look like? Are we coming in on a Saturday and doing a start to finish swap of equipment? What's the layout of the new equipment? What are the power needs? I think we'll be able to get a good synthesized big picture. And then again, can we open with this equipment and then cut over a couple of months in so we're not delaying the whole project? What's the, start to, what's the projected finish time for this as it stands now? Take your time, I'll keep poking around. I mean, this <clears throat> looks good. It's brilliant. Like people look at this stuff and they're like, what's all this crap? You know, well, yeah, the cabinet's got some rust, but look how bright those connections are. There's no white chalky powder, no corrosion. It's, it's actually pretty beautiful. Now the question is, <clears throat> in a moist environment like this where there is this much corrosion, how much internal deterioration and the breaker components that you can't access and can't replace. How much has there been? But the, at least the visible connections look really good. Obviously that's not a perfect by any means. July 14th, yeah. So you can almost guarantee without substantial expediting fees, like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, that this equipment's not gonna be in by then. So the question is how do we get it safely across the July 14th finish line and then plan for something future and maybe you know, sometimes I get it, budgets are maxed out. So maybe future is 12 to 24 months, not six months. Right. Um, but if we can get the pieces together in front of you guys, you can make the big picture decision. Then I think we're, we're dollars and cents ahead there. Now this is interesting. I've not seen one of these before. It's got this. This is the Cleveland Switchboard Company. Why that thumb screw is there, I don't know, but it says on. I'm just gonna pull on it, <laughs> let's see what happens. There it goes, hinge door, fuse cabinet, it's pretty cool. The fact that this fuse is not breakers <clears throat> actually helps our cause. Fuses are extremely, extremely reliable. And look how clean that is. I mean, look at the quality of the connections there. It had a good tight fit. Look how, look how bright and shiny that, this copper stabs are. I mean, they look like they've been wire brushed, in fact. Wow, I'm actually really impressed. Really impressed.
Wow. Well done, Cleveland. Yeah, good action. I mean, you can just feel it. Good action. That um, when you're flipping a breaker, you know, you get that snap, snap. I'm not gonna flip any anything on right now. You can flip something off. That little click. Well, this is similar. You can just feel that press fit. You can feel and sense the tension. Is that? So let's just go through. Let's just run through them on off. Um, I do need to take pictures as we go, so I'm um, using company cam. And I'll show you what the app looks like at the end of this, but I'm gonna carefully document everything. We've created about 1,500 company cam projects over the course of the last one year. It has been the easiest software to adopt as a company. It is used throughout our organization. We house both documents and site images. They're simple to mark up. And so everybody is going in our organization with two clicks is gonna be able to see exactly everything that I saw here today. All right, let's open it all up. Take those pictures, take a careful look. Super happy there are fuses, not breakers. I really didn't even know what I was looking at. This one's feeding the 200 amp panel on my left. That's the old utility CT cabinet. That's an exterior disconnect that is not required because, sorry, that's an interior disconnect that's not required because we have the exterior disconnect, um, but it's not hurting anything, again, as long as it's in good shape. Definitely a tight fit. Three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. So as much as I like span panels, I do have a tremendous appreciation for what I'm looking at here. This is um, it's in great condition. It was really well made. I haven't found anything yet that's broken down. We'll be looking at the connections. Each of these individual connections could be that some of these insulating blocks have um, cracked or snapped, or you just don't know what you're gonna find. Um, could have been harsh treatment of some kind or another at one time or another. So just uh, 250 bucks, essentially that buys two hours of my time to look carefully through here and, and figure out what's going on and make a recommendation. And then if it fails in the middle of the night, you know who's getting the phone call? to cancel 45 rehab appointments because the electrical gear that you recommended failed. You know, there's some responsibility there. But the same token, I'm not the kind of person to come in here and be like, you have to spend, no, I mean, just ballpark, budget cost to replace what we're looking at here. New 400 amp disconnect indoor, new 400 amp distribution panel, new 200 amp three phase panel. What kind of cost are you looking at? Drop your, drop your thoughts and I'll respond at some point in the future here as well. Um, it actually looks really good, even though it's as old as dirt. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and check everything, but you can see like on these copper connections here, they almost look like they're wire brushed. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like pure. So the press fit is nice and tight. The fact that it's fuses, not breakers is good because breakers suffer more in a damp environment. Fuses are just bulletproof, very reliable. So. My thought process, and I was talking to Kyle, Kyle yes, um, is this. Lead time on equipment like this, so lead time, budget, and um, overall project budget and timing are all a question mark. So lead time, we're gonna be six months plus for a new 400 amp distribution panel, if this is the only thing we replace. This is the old AES cabinet, no longer required. We don't have to have that disconnect because we have the exterior disconnect out there. So we could eliminate, now we've got that trough there and the conduit going down, I haven't figured that out, but we could at least eliminate potentially that disconnect to this cabinet and then just be replacing this one and keeping that one. And we could do this one six months down the road or whenever um, timing and budget align, if that's of interest. I know sometimes funds have to be recouped after a big project, so maybe it's 24 months. But what I'm seeing right now is this thing will last and serve for another 24 months. That's, that's not a question in my mind yet. 
Um, but I'm going to check all the little um, connections and supports and just see if anything's cracked, broken, missing. Uh, first impression, really good. <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of our hope was, you know, from this panel out, we basically want to redo everything, which is the quote you already uh, You said this panel out? That panel. This one out. Cool. It, it was pulled apart and yeah, you could I like... Mm. I wonder if he tapped it over. Huh? I wonder if he tapped that coupling yeah, over. That's what I'm saying. I think we, I think Matt tapped that coupling over. Yeah. See, it kind of looks like it had moved, but it was apart. So yeah, maybe they already messed it. Gotcha. Yeah, this PVC run doesn't have any expansion joints, and it's pretty long, so that's prone to happen. And it might be a, just a matter of kind of getting it back, back centered. Not to say it couldn't pull apart again, depending on how, where the tension is and how it pulls. Especially when it gets cold, is when it shrinks, right? You know how I was taking all these thumb screws off? The, <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with anything. It just looked like some kind of, I should have just investigated the first one. I got carried away. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. It just helps hold this componentry to the door of the cabinet. <laughs> so don't, don't pull those off. Time to check the connections all, all down the side. These are de-energized right now. Um, yes, that's correct, because these fuse doors are open. Whoops! Uh, that's why we check them. Look at that. Look at that. That was down at the terminal. Alright, now the question is how do I even get a screwdriver in there to tighten that down? There's probably some way to remove this door. I bet you could back those out. Hmm. Here. The conduit's unsupported and all wonky on the top of that box there, but... Uh, action seems to be crisp. It's water <laughs> through the conduit. Just a drip. That's probably from... We'll see where that conduit goes. That's probably just from all the power washing and stuff. I don't have any concerns about that panel. Rusty son of a gun. That one went. Uh. All that for nothing. <laughs> Looks perfect. Got no, no issues. Get a bug boy back in here. He'd like that along with the cockroaches. <laughs> All right. Uh oh. Yeah, you only go so far. Yeah. Technically a code violation. Must open at least 90 degrees. Well, let's see what's going on in there. Let's just see about pulling a fuse here. Okay, so that. I'm just gonna grab my tester and make sure that DNR is. It sure looks like it pulled out. All right, couple of couple of tools here. Oh, that's not a conduit. That's just a support. That's what that is. So it just comes in, goes through. It'd still be nice to see if there are any joints in there. Also, pretty clean. <sighs> That's de-energized. Let's just pull it up here to the top side. Test on known live circuits before and after use. 126. Cool, that's what we expected. But, good to be certain. Let's pull this out. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Bad at all. Those covers are captive, so as soon as you throw that on, there's an internal mechanism that engages, and you can't pull them open. Let's wrestle that cover off, see if there are any joints. It's cool, this has been field welded. That's a custom trough that's been welded from this cabinet to the cabinet next door. See that? We've checked a few sizes. <clears throat> Everything's good. Wiring terminations, that looks fine. So it's time to close it back up. I think the consensus is this thing will last us for a while. How long? Yeah, it's hard to say, but it's come so far. Is it a, an expense that could be deferred 24 months? Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Cleveland. 
Um, I'll finish putting the covers on and then we'll throw that switch back on. You got it? Yep. Beautiful. Can I have that lighting? Everything's wet in there, probably, but it looks like it's just recently wet because nothing's corroded. Pressure washed yeah. in the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, okay. Well, let's just dry up the bus real quick. Anybody have paper towels, napkins? We don't need much. So, okay, maybe the moisture is just really at the top. Good. So our scope of work on the bigger project, the $26,000 job, ugh, that smell is going to be from here onward. And this disconnect is still off. It's kind of just crud in there. Bunch of mouse poo too. Something to note. Hang that up. So all this will get um, thoroughly addressed as we pull new circuits and home runs. It seems like the moisture is just really at the top. Everything else is starting to. Okay. Yeah, it, it self-resolves up here. It didn't need much down here. It's fine. Okay, well, we'll take a look inside. You're gonna like the little craftsmanship. You see the conduits are entering top and bottom of this panel tub, and so they really didn't have much opportunity for how to replace the tub in a cost-effective manner. You kinda have to cut all the conduits way back, set a trough top and bottom, but uh, this was a creative solution, and I feel like they, whoever did it did put some care into it. So I got some, some uh, Casual admiration for what's been done here. So this is actually a pretty common practice is a lot of electrical panels are installed in hallways in like school facilities, government facilities where they're like uh, concrete block corridors and things. The Oaks Academy has this, you know, it's just all over. And so these are embedded, these old panels are embedded in concrete. So to actually replace them is just insanity because you'd have to, then you have rigid conduits coming in top, bottom. I mean, it's, if you found one that was the exact same size and just slid into that opening, how in the world would you ever get the, the old one out? You know, it's just like, it's brain damage is what they call that. So this is a very common practice. Drop in the comments whether you love it, hate it, have done it before. The real big question we walked in here with was, can we keep the equipment? My assessment is, it's actually surprisingly in fantastic shape. Kyle thinks, we, we scrape it, prime it, paint it, so that it doesn't give any rise to uh, discussions regarding the sketchy um, age of the facility with employees. It really looks fantastic inside. I think we've got 24 months plus, and we can kick this uh, expense down the road for the uh, customer. We're gonna take scope of work here, onward throughout the entire facility. That'll be brand new, it's just this equipment here. So I'm saying, for now, we're in good shape. But if you've got eyes and ears that are different than mine, drop it in the comments. I want to hear from you. And subscribe ah, to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money. <laughs>